<laughs> now then, as you can see, this this time round, um, I'm going to talk about CSS. Now I've just finished talking about HTML, and HTML is really really important. And it used to be HTML was was exactly how every web page was built on its own. You had HTML, and inside your HTML page, you had your content. That is, you know, the writing, the pictures, the stuff you wanted to be in your web page, and you also had the style in there. You would use things like your embold and your so your emphasis, your strong. You could use your font tag and make different bits, different color. Use your body tag and set the background color, things like that. And everything was in one file. Everything was in one place. And actually, that's that's, that's wrong. That's not the right way to do it. Um, a much better way is to separate the content from the style. So you have one file that tells you all the stuff you want to appear in the web page, all the text, all the images. And in another web page, in another file, sorry, you describe how you want it to appear. And the beauty of that is you can then change the appearance of your website really, really easily. If you've got a, a hundred pages on your website and you want to go through and you're changing, you're changing your corporate image, you want to change the background colour from blue to red on every page. That means you have to go to every single HTML page and change the tags on every single HTML page to change the colour. Alternatively, if they're all linked to one style page or CSS file, then you change it once and it automatically changes every other page because the, when you load your HTML page, it says go to the CSS file for all the style detail, which makes it incredibly quick and simple to update the style of your website without having to go and change every single web page, which will take forever. Okay, so we do that using CSS. If you want a practical example, there is a fantastic website um, called CSS Zen Garden. I think it's .com, but double check. CSS Zen Garden. Um, and what you get is you get a web page, and look carefully at the text. You know, you don't have to read the whole thing, but look carefully at the text. And then down the sidebar, there are, there are some links. And click on one of these links, and the, the web page will change completely. You get a completely different web page, it looks completely different. You wouldn't imagine it was anything to do with the same website. The text will be the same. Um, some of the pictures might be different, but the text will be the same. What's changed is the CSS file, and it's a really graphic demonstration of the difference you can make to web pages just by changing the CSS. The content's the same, the CSS makes it different. If you've ever had a blog, if you've ever you know had a, had a WordPress blog or a Blogger blog, or anything where you can change the theme, it's, again, it's all CSS, even with a Google site, um, it's all CSS. So you just change the CSS file, the content stays the same, and it's different. So the first thing is to understand why we have CSS. And the reason is to separate the content from the design or the style. Okay, That's the whole point of CSS, to keep those things separate. And that, that's likely to come up as an exam question at some point. So it's important you know that. So how do you do CSS? Well, there's two ways you can do CSS. Um, you can do CSS um, within your HTML page, which kind of defeats the object, I know. But it's, it's a reasonable way to start with CSS, if that's what you want to do. And so all you have to do is say, and I don't think you need to memorise this, but if you put style type equals text slash CSS, and put some CSS in here, and you put that in, in the head of your website, okay, this is in the head, so between head and slash head, And you put your CSS in here, and that will then affect that web page. I don't know if you can read any of that because I'm going to write that really quickly. Um, but that will that will then do, apply the CSS to your website. If you want to do it properly and have a separate CSS file, which is what I would recommend, um, then it's link rel equals style sheet. I'll be honest, I've got this written on a piece of paper next to me because I can't remember this. You know, it's not something I type all that often. This is all on the same line. I'll just go over because it, it doesn't fit otherwise. Type equals text slash CSS and the href is style.css, whatever your CSS file is called. Okay, so what that means is we're going to link to something, the thing we're going to link to is a style sheet, it's going to be of type text CSS and the reference to the file is style.css. So as long as that file again is in the same folder, it will apply that CSS to the website. Okay, and again, the best way to do this is to practice. The best way to write CSS is in a simple text editor. Again, something like Notepad++ will do some coloured markup to make it a bit easier. Um, but you don't need anything fancy. You don't need Dreamweaver or anything like that. All you need is just just a text editor. Okay, because it's just text that we're talking about. 
So that's how you get the CSS in. What does CSS look like? Well, CSS looks something like this. If I've got some text in a paragraph, um, so I've got my paragraph tag, I've got some writing in there, that's the end of my paragraph. Okay, that's nice and straightforward, nice and easy. If I want to make that text red, what I do is in my CSS file, I say P, open curly bracket, the colour is going to be red, close curly bracket. Okay? Now then, if you've done any programming that uses curly brackets, something like Java or C++, um, you'll be familiar with this kind of concept. If you're not, it's a little bit different. Okay? I forgot the semicolon there. The rules are, you have what's called the identifier, which is the thing that we're going to change. You then have a curly bracket to say the, this, these are all things we're going to change about that, that, that identifier. You then have your parameter, which is the, the aspect you're going to change, colour. And you have a variable, which is what you're going to change it to. Okay. Um, now I could write that all on one line. So I'll rewrite it on one line. There's nothing wrong with that. So you can say paragraph, curly bracket. I'm going to change the colour. And I'm going to make it red. So there's a colon there. Semicolon for the end of that instruction. Close curly bracket. That's so that's my line. That will make all my writing that is in a paragraph tag red. Okay? And again, best way to learn this is go away and do it and try it. Okay, you've got some paragraph tags in the web pages you should already have written. You can create a new CSS file, just call it you know style.css or stylesheet.css, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter, as long as it ends in .css. Um, and then in there all you need is to say is P, open curly bracket, colour colon red, semicolon. Close curly bracket. The, the colons and the brackets are mildly irritating. You've got to remember them. Um, but it's, that's just tough. That's just the way it goes. Um, and there are lots of other things you can add as well. The reason I wrote them originally on different lines is because you can add um, a number of different kind of um, aspects of it. And I'm just looking again for my notes, my kind of cheat sheet. Because um, CSS, I've tended to um, hack bits of existing CSS rather than write it from scratch, which means I'm not very good at remembering it, which is a bit rubbish. Um, but what you can do is, so you can open curly bracket like this, and you can say colour is going to be red, semicolon, um, text align is going to be centre. Again, we've got to spell it in American, which is irritating, and that'll do. Um, I could say the font size. Um, it's all one word, so use hyphens. These are hyphens, not underscores, they're hyphens. Um, use hyphens to do it. So did I say hyphens enough there? Font size, um, I could say it's going to be 12 pixels. I could say it's going to be 14 points. I could even say it's going to be 5 centimetres tall. Um, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Again, semicolon. Um, and you can also add one of my favourites. That's going to go off the bottom of my mood up there. There we go. If I say margin left, you can see you use margin right and things like that. So if I put margin left is going to be, uh, again you can use pixels, so I could say 10 pixels, or equally you can do it relative and say 10% of however wide the page is at the minute. Um, so if I was going to align it on the on the right, I'm going to use text line to the right, and I want margin right to be 20%. What that means, I'll just swap over to this page here a minute. So here's my web page here. Okay. Twenty percent is going to be about about there. Yep, that means it'll be that much margin there. And then my writing will be aligned to the right like that in my paragraph. Okay? I've got the closed curly bracket on there. There we go. Yep, so it's going to make the colour red, so we can make this writing red. I haven't got a red pen with me. Um, it will align to the right. It's going to use a fairly small uh, five centimeters. I might be quite a big font size actually. I've never tried it. Um, it does work, but you can use. I'll use pixels or points. I'll use fourteen point. That's fairly large. So fairly large text. There's going to be a margin on the right. You won't see the line of course. Um, so all my paragraphs will appear like that. However, if I've got something in heading one before that, um, then the heading one. Um, let's say I align that to the right. I have another one um, underneath. You just write this underneath. Heading one. Um, uses font size 24, nice and big, um, and uses text align to the center. Okay, um, and so my heading one, which will be up here, will be in the center, 
and it'll be across there like that. Okay, so this line will get ignored. Um, I don't, that doesn't look very neat, does it? It doesn't look very tidy. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that very well. So I'm going to have another go with some other chord and do something similar. Um, so what I could do is I could say my body, which is the page, I'm going to use uh, the background colour is going to be and no blue. And my colour, which is my text colour, doesn't say text colour, it just says colour, but it is text colour, um, is going to be white. And again, you can use the, the hash codes, the hexadecimal codes, to do that, okay? So that would make my page blue in colour with all white, right, white writing. And then my paragraph, wherever I've got paragraphs, the colour is actually going to be grey. And what that would mean is that all my headings are going to be uh, white, because that's the default text colour, but all the body text is going to be grey, so it'll stand out a bit differently. And there's, there's loads of tags. Um, the ones I would recognise that you, you remember and you learn are, these are the parameters, are the colour, background colour. Remember, it's always all one word, so use hyphens. Um, text align. So that'd be right, left, or centre. Font family. So that could be Arial, it could be Times New Roman, it could be Serif, it could be Sans Serif. Um, font size. Again, that could be pixels, it could be points, uh, could even be in centimetres. And margin left. Um, oop, left or margin right equally. And that can be the absolute, which is a number of pixels. Um, so it could be, you know, 10 pixels. Or equally, it could be percentage, it could be 5%, which then is a relative amount compared to the size of the page. Um, and if you remember all those, you'd be fine. And so remember, you've got your identifier, curly brace, your parameter with a variable, that will be green, and then a semicolon, and at the end of the whole thing, close your curly brace. Okay, and that's your basic CSS. Again, quite a lot to learn, and the best way to learn it is to go away and practice. So if you've made some web pages, go away and um, and change them. Okay, have make two different CSS files that make the pages look completely different, and just try swapping them over and see how it affects your HTML. Um, needs to strip out anything to do with formatting. Really, you can inline stuff like your emphasis and your your strong and things like that are fine. Um, but you know, if you've got any font tags or any you know any parameters in your body, things like that. This is, this is what I meant when I did the HTML video. Um, it's been superseded by CSS because you've got your body tag here in the CSS and you can change it there. And it's much easier because rather than doing it in one file once, you're doing, it, you're doing it everywhere across your whole site in one go. Okay, so have a go with those.